What's up, everybody? We're back with Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you learn how to attract an audience online, build influence, and create more ideal clients. We have a, a great guest with us today, Jason Morris at Myrtle Beach. You might know him from the Facebook group and the world of Facebook. Uh, he's a repeat guest on the show, so we've got a bunch of stuff to get into with him. We've got the evil bald ninja, Gene Volpe, is here as well to join us and, uh, and render us astonished with his range and depth of marketing knowledge. Uh, and then we've got uh, Greg, who's here to astonish and amaze us with his hair. Uh, and nothing else. Greg, what's up? Dude, Jason and I are both rocking COVID here. I look like Kramer <laughs> just popping through the front door. Hey, everybody. Uh, kind of a moment. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Jason and I were talking off air about stuff. Gene decided to put a hat on because he's tired of me saying he looks bald, I think, in every show. Oh, and there it is in all its glory. I love it. Now, it's going to be a great show. But, uh, Volpe, uh, do you have a tech tip for us? Because... Uh, I'm gonna throw you under the bus. No, I don't get nothing. <laughs> nope. I've I've gone I'm going cold on these. I I am on strike. I'm on tech 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 tip strike. <laughs> tech uh, tip strike. All right. Well, then that there you go. Bye, Gene. Okay, and so we'll continue on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man. All right. Let's uh <laughs> we've got we've got a bunch of stuff to get into. But first of all, Jason, officially welcome to the show. What's up, man? Thanks, man. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> it's been a while. I think it's been so, two, maybe three years, something like that. It's been a long yeah, time. You had just launched your Facebook group when you came on the first time. Tell us, uh, just give us an yeah. idea of uh, so the the who you are, where you are, what you do, and then we'll catch up with what's been with what's kind of yeah, been going. So, um, when we first done this, you know, the Facebook group is small. Now it's a little over thirty three thousand agents. Um, oh. in the big group, then um, in the group coaching group that I do, I do Jason Morris Group Coaching. And uh, that's right around 500, 500 agents. That's a paid group. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. It's about forty dollars a month. But what I, what I do is I train agents to build a business that's going to work for them, rather than a business where they're like working seven days a week, twenty four hours a day. Right? We want to build systems and build things basically based around listings, building a listing heavy business rather than a buyer heavy business, so that you can control your time, you control your life, you can have better control over your income, and you know. You can just plan, right? A lot of agents are out there and they're just hoping things are going to happen. They're hoping their sphere of influence um, kicks in for them and comes through. They're hoping that, you know, they're hoping that $5 worth of Facebook ads is going to work, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, a lot of the stuff we talk about is relatively inexpensive, low cost or no cost type stuff. And um, a lot of mindset stuff, a lot of the agents that I see that I'm training, a lot of them um, just don't get a lot of direction for their offices right now. They're not getting a lot of direction from their offices. They're not getting a lot of direction from um, from uh, even some of the coaches and training that they've been through, and that's what I provide, you know. And right now we're in um, we're in some interesting. We are in interesting times, mm -hmm. especially with the real estate business, and uh, we don't know what's going to happen, you know, as far as the future. Unemployment rates are soaring, and um, but you know, there's still a lot of opportunity out there, Matt. It's tremendous opportunity. I, I'm. I, for one, think we have more opportunity right now in the real estate business than we have had the 17 years that I've been in the business. Yeah, let's let's go deeper on that for a second, because obviously that's that's not the message you get if you sit down all day watching CNN. So what do you no, mean by there's more, there's more opportunity? Well, for the agents that are actually out there working, um, like the people that are listening to this, you guys attract a, a good group of agents, a good audience that are actually working on their business. Well, a lot of agents right now are sitting there watching the news. So a lot of them are not wanting to go out. They're not wanting to go out. Now, I'm not saying don't be safe, right? Be safe, be smart, and all that stuff. But um, there's still people buying and selling houses. If you don't believe me, pull up your MLS and look. I mean, there's still listings that came on the market today. There's still listings that went pending. There's listings that, went, that uh, got marked sold. But most of your competition isn't working. And a lot of those agents that were prospecting every day, man, they're so... Thing, well, for the last two, three months now, their schedule has been completely thrown off. Mm -hmm. um, kids Here in the state of South Carolina, kids aren't going to go back to school until August, right? Yeah. So uh, in daycare, most of the daycares are following the school schedules and the daycares aren't opening. Like I got I got two kids and um, and one of, well, one of them goes to daycare. The other one's only three months old. But the one that goes to the daycare thing, daycare is closed. So a lot, I mean, we're fortunate that we have a little different situation than a lot of people, but for most agents, you know, hey, if you were that 
the mom that took care of the kids while your husband worked and you sold real estate while they were at school, mm-hmm. or you were the, you were the spouse or whatever that had that, you know, sold real estate and your other significant other had a job. Dude, you're stuck with kids right now at home where you were going to the office every day, making calls. Now you're not your whole schedule, your whole life has been thrown like in a, in just a crazy tailspin. So for a lot of those agents that are suffering from that, I, I feel bad for a man because honestly, there's a lot of them that are never going to come back to the business. A lot yeah. of them won't ever come back to the business. Um, they're gone after this. A lot of them that are collecting unemployment will never come back to the business, right? They're going to get used to that weekly check. And when that check starts to run out, they're going to go back to work wherever they were working before they sold real estate. Mm-hmm. And um, there's just a lot of them won't get back into the routine. But, but for the agents that are out there willing to work right now, there's less people making calls than ever before. And there's still a lot of people, even though most states are open and back up, about half the country is open and back up like normal. South Carolina is about, you know, most of the way back open again. And there's still a lot of people sitting around doing nothing, right? And there's still a lot of people that, um, you know, have time to answer their phone. They have time to talk with you on the phone. And um, and there's not, you know, your competition's been cut in half. Maybe maybe your competition's down 75% in some markets. So let me ask you. Let me ask you this question, Jason. If, 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 I mean, I'm starting to feel the same thing. I feel that there's going to be a lot of you know fallout that we're not even seeing yet in our industry, outside of mm-hmm. our industry, and just got a notification that a restaurant here in the area that's been around for like 30 or 40 years, you know, they just locked all they locked all 40 locations. Done. Ne- never coming back. Wow. Because you know, and that's just one that I've heard about. All the ones that are quietly slipping into the night, into the night, and you know, I've I've been telling people, I've been screaming from the rooftops. This is not a a deficit. This is an opportunity. This is when you go double down, super hard in the paint, and you crank out whatever you're going to be doing. Like I'm going super hard on videos, creating content every single day. You know, being as visible as humanly possible, getting put on as many podcasts as I can. And you know, the thing is, is that most people, like you said, are sitting on their on their on their rear ends watching YouTube or watching you know. Uh, Netflix or Hulu, dude, you've got to be out there and be aggressive. I mean, that, you know, Bob from Remax, we know that dickhead probably isn't going to come back into the business. And so all that territory that he owned, right, those neighborhoods he owned, well, these are neighborhoods that are going to be up for grabs. And you can't think with the same mindset that you had pre-COVID because it was a different experience at that point. And a lot of people were on fire. Yeah. You, you know what, too, Greg? Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of those agents that are be gone. And I'll, I'll tell you guys this. So this is my sec. Well, I don't want to call this a recession because I guess technically we're not in a recession yet. But um, looks like downturn. we might be going there. Who knows? Well, this is my second downturn, right? Second time we, we went through a little uh, a period in the market that wasn't going up. You know, for mm-hmm. the last however many years, a lot of the agents that we've worked with, um, they've only been they've only worked through an up market. Mm. Right. And honestly, the last couple of years, most of the country, we've been very little more than order takers. I mean, you know, you listed a house and it was relatively priced well, you sold it. I mean, that's it. Now, now we're going to see where a lot of the people that had problems with jobs, unemployment, a lot of the people did mortgage deferrals and all that stuff. We're going to see some unique problems. We're going to see problems that maybe some of them we saw in 2008 but maybe some of them we didn't see in 2008, right? We might see some new ones like short sales. Short sales didn't, didn't exist in 2006. They didn't exist in 2007. You can look at the Google traffic. You can look at Google history traffic and see that that term short, short sale started trending in 2007, 2008 with actual traffic. So I believe we're going to see some new situations like that too. So the agent that, was out there listing an occasional house every now and then it really didn't have much experience, didn't have much knowledge, didn't care to learn. Um, that agent's probably going to be just like they've been. They've sold a couple of houses and that's it. But the agent that's willing to go out there and learn and be a problem solver is going to be extremely valuable in our market. And they're going to have a skill set. Having that skill set of being a problem solver is going to be something that like the flat fee listing companies can't do. The iBuyer programs can't do all these mm-hmm. things that agents have been concerned about the last couple of years competing with them. Um, we're going to really be people that offer advice. We're really going to be people that help people through problems. Right. And um, I, I'm, I don't know about you guys. I'm pretty excited about that. And yeah. not that I want people to have problems, but I'll tell you this, man, 2000, 2008, 2009 to about 2012, 
in my market. I've done a lot of short sales. Now, it wasn't that I liked doing short sales. I'll be honest with you, dude. I'm not good with paperwork. Um, I am not a paperwork person whatsoever, but I kept doing it. Once I learned the process, I kept doing them. And the reason being is because most agents in my market didn't have a lot of experience. Most agents across the country didn't have a lot of experience. And I knew there was a lot of people out there that had problems. And I knew that I was probably, maybe I wasn't the best. We'll, we'll, we'll be, uh, won't be like crazy here. Maybe I wasn't their best option, but I was one of their best options, right? Mm -hmm. As far as advice and knowledge and stuff. And man, during that time, there's a lot of programs just like there is now where people can, um, people can get money from the government to assist with moving expenses or whatever it may be. And dude, I had people do short sales, man, um, get a release from the loan for their house and walk away with God, anywhere from $3,000 to $30,000 back then. Yeah. And it was part of the Obama debt relief act. And I'll tell you guys something interesting right now that I think all agents should be doing. And me and Greg were touching on this a little bit before we started, man, for rent by owners, there's a lot of landlords right now that can evict. They cannot evict. They only got one or two properties. They can't evict. They can't collect rent. The tenants behind on rent, whatever it is. And so therefore they're going to have to do a deferment because they can't pay their loan. Right. But if we look at that stimulus um, package that came out a little while ago, I can't remember the exact number, but I think there's like $150 billion towards housing. It might've been more than that, but I think the number was like 150 billion. And a lot of that money was going to go towards housing authorities. Now, now get this. I got a friend in, in Pennsylvania and I was talking to, um, talking to them the other day and they've got seven or eight rentals in the, because of the government being shut down up there, the housing authority shut down. Right. So my guess is, my guess is, is that money is going to be distributed through the housing authority. But I know here locally on my local level here, um, the housing authority doesn't seem to have a system. They've got money, but they don't have a system to give it out right now, at least in the counties that I work in a lot. And if you're an agent that can figure out that program on how to get money for these tenants that are behind and you can start going out there, calling your landlord list and it gives you a big reason to call them. And dude, if you can help that tenant that's two, three months behind or help that landlord get that tenant two or three months behind called up, you're going to be a hero. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and guess what? That landlord that couldn't evict, um, all of a sudden you can't evict a tenant that's not paying. You can't even file. You couldn't even file in the state of South Carolina for almost three months. Dude, there's some landlords out there that are sick of it. They're mm -hmm. ready to do whatever they need to do to get rid of that house. They're not going to yeah. go through that again. Well, there's a whole yeah. nother segment of opportunity here for people to be, if you're going to mm -hmm. be doing calling or targeting, you know, Airbnb and VRBO. These are property yep. heavy, heavy individuals. That was a really fun, sexy thing to do. But as of this recording, Airbnb just laid off another 3,000 people, you know, and so there, there's a massive bleed that's taking place right now. And if you have one, two, 10, 15 properties that you're making, a, you're crushing on an Airbnb or VRBO, you know, you can start marketing to these people because there's also another 24, 2,451 down payment assistant programs out there in every county, every state, every city, 83% wow. of them have money waiting for home buyers to go out there and start buying. And if the market's gonna take a dip and you can get over 2,400, you know, loan down, down payment alone system yeah. programs, 36% of those are for non first time home prop buyers. And as we all know, first time home buyers are just the people that haven't bought in three years or owned in three years. So if you owned, lost or owned and dumped and now you wanna come back in, you can 36% of those deal, of those programs ha are, are earmarked for you and you can layer them so you can put program after program after program under each other and around each other to help assist. So wow. if someone's out there and they're like, oh, I'm losing my investment or I'm losing this or doing that. OK, cool. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we dump the asset that's not working, do a 1031 exchange or go cash heavy and pull out, take the tax it. And then let's use these loan down payment, uh, uh, down payment assistance programs, help you get into another property. I mean, this is not the end of the world. I mean, a lot of people are going to say this is, this is, you know, woe is me. The life is over. No, it's just changing. You're like, it's a snake shedding its skin. We're going to come back. We're kind of, you know, you, you can come back stronger. It's just how you go and attack it. You know, I heard Matt do an audible woe when it came to the down payment assistance programs. Oh yeah. Like stacking them together and different things like that. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's insane. We're in an odd, we're in an odd niche of time where 
the government is about to throw a lot of money around, but, but do it as the government does most things badly uh, and with very little <laughs> oversight. So, uh, yeah, so you might as well either try to take advantage of it or get get educated in it to become a problem solver, which I like, it, Jason, I like that about your approach because yep. you're right that number one, that's always worked. That's always what the yep. best agents do. But in a downturn, it, it leaves it. it leaves everyone else that can't be a problem solver it essentially sweeps them out to sea and everyone that can oh, yeah. solve problems are the Without ones that are left standing you know so i love that approach uh tell me a little bit because your original focus um i think we probably went in depth on it the last time you taught you were here with us uh is that you were really really big into for sale by owners um yeah. has that uh, uh, i'm curious how that's evolved over the years uh, you know what? We still, I still train a lot on for sale owners. I still train a lot on expireds. Um, not a lot of that's changed. I mean, really the same objections we were getting, I was getting 17 years ago when I first started selling real estate, they're the same objections we're getting now. You know, um, there isn't really a class that's, you know, Hey, 101 new objections to give real estate agents. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, the same things out there, you know, Hey, I don't want to ha hire an agent right now. I'll bring it. I'll pay you 3% if you bring a buyer, um, you know, I don't want to pay a commission, you know, the same objections we were hearing, you know, 15 years ago, God, they were hearing them 25, 30 years ago in the real estate business. We're still hearing them this week. You know, um, uh, we got some new conditions out there with the, with the coronavirus. That's a little bit different. People are a little nervous about somebody coming into their house or somebody coming into their house without a mask, you know, things like that. But, but even that, that's good. I mean, I really believe it's temporary, you know? Um, God, you know, hope. yeah, I believe it's temporary. I mean, it's, um, you know, it seems like every time you turn around, there's new information coming out there where maybe things aren't quite as bad as what we thought a month ago. And, um, CDC even had something that it released yesterday saying it wasn't as contagious on surfaces as thought. And, um, <laughs> so here, here's a funny <laughs> thing about this. Everyone's freaked out about, you know, the, the, you know, you gotta be, wash your hands and it, hygiene is good, right? Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But why is it not contagious on the Amazon packages or at Safeway <laughs> or at Walmart packages? How come it doesn't stick yeah. to those surfaces? So weird. So yeah, weird. it's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird, man. Yeah, but, but Jason, uh, I'm with you. I, I think things will get back to normal. I, I think that there's going to be a very small segment of the of the population that will be very reluctant for a while to kind of get back to quote unquote normal. And and you know, like the next time something comes around, they'll be the first ones to throw the masks on again. They'll be the first ones yeah. to w break the gloves out again, or to or to uh, to self quarantine, so to speak. But I think the majority of the people are going to get back to normal. Uh, which is, which I think is good. Uh, and it, it speaks a lot for, um, for agents. I don't think we should be hoping that people don't get, that, that there's some new normal in real estate that now people aren't going to want to do open houses. Therefore, I don't need to worry about learning how to do open houses. Like people have been doing open houses since I don't know how long, I mean, ah, decades and decades and decades. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the, the, you know, nothing, nothing has changed that over the years, except in little pockets of, of localities here and there. So I do think there's a lot of things that that are going to stay constant. Same objections, same things like that. So let, let's I, talk a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Can I stop you there real quick? Let me stop yeah, you there real quick because I'm, I'm interested to hear both of you said something that I'd like to clarify. And then I also want to find out a little bit more about the open house because that's been a big topic for me this week. So Jason and Matt, you both said things will get back to normal. In your opinion, what does that time frame look like? Will it get back to normal next month or is it four years away, number one? And then the second question is, these don't you think things have changed? I'm wondering how many people will be less likely to physically go to an open house and more likely sit behind their computer for a virtual open house these days. I saw a lot of properties bought and sold over the last three weeks, sight unseen because of the virtual tours, right? So two questions in one there, if, if you can just tackle both of those. Yeah. Jason, go first and I'll, um, I'll come after you. Man, well, you know what? The um, open houses in, in my market, I mean, I'm in South Carolina. Um, Dude, I feel like things are back to normal. We aren't social distancing, nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's like, uh, I mean, I've seen some occasional people wearing masks and stuff, but I mean, other than that, for the most part, um, most part, we're back to normal. I mean, like, I'd say give it another month or so. I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of kind of wild. They said, hey, hospitals are going to be full and all this stuff, but it has it never nope. happened here in South Carolina, nope. you never know? Never happened here either. And nope. so, nope. Um, yeah, it didn't happen anywhere that I know of. And so I think that um, 
I think another month, I think things would be back to normal. I mean, open house, I've never been a fan of open houses anyway. I wish they'd go away. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean really, you know, if we're to be honest with it, you know, it's going to take you, you schedule three hours for the open house, right? It's going to take an hour to get ready, an hour to clean up. Okay. So you got five hours in that deal. And that doesn't include like, you know, calling the neighborhood and inviting people. It doesn't include nothing else, right? Just mm-hmm. putting out your signs, you know, whatever you do before it, doing the open house, you know, and then clean it up. So you got five hours in that deal. But Greg, like what would happen if you sat in your office where it's nice and air conditioned and you're really comfortable drinking coffee and you prospected for five hours? Uh, you know, your business would like many, yeah, your, your business would explode, man, if you done that every Saturday rather than go sit on somebody else's couch in their living room and hope somebody showed up. It doesn't make open houses never made a lot of sense to me. You know, well, um, I mean, I've done them over the years, but. I mean, think about it. I mean, what if you were able to go in and do some high tech stuff and be able to, you know, tell them, hey, you guys, I'm going to do a video, uh, video open house. Please ask any questions, you know, tag, tag, tag in from wherever you are. I'll be able to show you anything, answer any questions for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do that. You can do the Australian model of doing a 30 minute or a one hour open house that you market strategically for that one use at time. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think what about what if you were able to take that video or that you shot about the house, put it in a custom landing page, take that link, email it out to every agent in your marketplace you know say hey look i have a brand new listing here it is here's the inside video of it you know you know matterport if you guys didn't know this matterport just came out last week and they stated that you can now shoot a matterport video with your iphone or one of your 360 cameras and it's incredibly reasonable you don't need all that big chunky equipment anymore you go say hey look Here's a Matterport. Here's a walkthrough. You can put embedded embedded videos into your Matterport video so you can talk about specific stuff in the house, answer specific questions that are commonly asked questions. You know, I mean, I, I honestly, we've got we've gotten hundreds of hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of deals from open houses. It is the thing that I despise the most. I hate fucking putting up those signs. I mean, I hate them. Like, hate them, hate them, hate them, hate them. But I hate picking them up. I don't want to go uh, pick them up. You know? You're sweaty. <laughs> you've been out working. It's like 95 fucking degrees. You're like, oh, why am I wearing khakis? And is is my butt, you know, butt sweat showing? Oh, Jesus, this well, is just a rough day. Well, if if, well, if I was gonna say, Greg, the answer to that question with you is always yes. Just assume <laughs> that the answer is yes. <laughs> so, but but guys, you know, like us on this call right now, we're at the top. We're at the top. We're probably in the top one or two percent, right? As far as knowledge about technology, knowledge about stuff, right? Especially internet, Facebook, social media type followings. So if if we set if we set there on our Facebook page and we did a one hour open open um, mic night, or uh, not open mic night, but open <laughs> house, right? We did a one hour um, open house. We invited people to ask questions. We shared it maybe to a few groups on Facebook or something. We could probably have dozens, maybe, maybe even a hundred people watch our video, right. Mm-hmm. Um, over the course of, you know, without doing any type of a uh, boosted ads or nothing like that. So we can get a lot of people in there, but the average agent out there, the average agent, the newer agent, they don't have, you know, I'd say they have, they don't have a big budget. Um, they don't have a big budget. They don't have a lot of knowledge about Facebook. They don't have a big Facebook audience or anything like that. You know, what about them? You know, they're going to be sitting there in the open house for two hours uh, on Facebook Live and they're going to have, um, you know, their grandma is going to watch it. And um, maybe maybe their sister or brother like clicks on it one time, you know, for a couple of seconds, you know. Um, You know, I just feel like a lot of those those people would just be better off skipping the open house of prospect, actually reaching out to, you know, let's say you do an open house and you really work, you really work your butt off getting it set up. Right. Mm -hmm. Do a really good job. Um, and let's say, let's say you have a really good one and how many people would you say come through 20, maybe uh, 30? Dude, you get 20, 30 people come. Is that groups or people? If you had 20 groups come through, that's a rock star. Uh, yeah. 20 groups, you know, it's like a husband and wife or, you know, people looking, right. You got 20 people come through or 20 groups come through. That's a really good open house. At least here, that's a really good open house. Mm-hmm. But a lot of these agents aren't doing that. Like when, when I've done them before, we'd knock on all the doors and stick flyers in the door if they went home and personal invites and all this stuff, you know, do mailers out. Um, and we'd have a good turnout, like even within the neighborhood. And uh, But even if you got 20 people to come, if you got on the phone for that same amount, five hours, 
and you just used a single line dialer, you're going to, you're going to be able to call like 60 to 80 people an hour on a single line dialer. Let's just say 50 people an hour to make it easy. So okay. you're going to make, you're going to take, and you're going to call 50 people an hour for five hours. So you got 250 dials you made. Let's say you get one out of eight on the phone. You're going to target four sale owners and expires. You get one out of eight. That's going to give you somewhere around 30, 35 people that you actually get to talk to. They're going to be targeted sellers or people that you know at least wanted to sell their house at one time or another, right? Those 20 people that came in the open house, um, 10 of those are nosy neighbors. <laughs> you know, those groups are nosy neighbors. Maybe one or two are thinking about selling their house. Maybe one or two have a brother or sister they'd like for to move closer. But those 20 people aren't really targeted. Maybe you have one that's serious versus having that 30 to 35 that you know wanted to do something because either they got a for sale by owner ad on Craigslist or they expired last month or whatever it was, you know, at least they wanted to do something mm -hmm. at some point fairly recently, you know, in the last, well, depending on how far you go back with expires for the last 12 months. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know that's kind of getting off top. Vent themselves and have the ability to stand up and they, you and I both are, I mean, are they effective? Yes. Do we want to do them? No. So, I mean, it's, it's a very good way for you to say, Hey, look, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, you know, uh, we don't do home. Loan, we don't do open houses anymore for, for health reasons. Everyone, no one's going to yeah. fight for that. Right. You're, yeah. That is true. That's yeah. like a get out of jail <laughs> yeah. free card for every listing agent who doesn't want to do open houses anymore. Oh. That may be the best thing. That may be the best thing that comes out of COVID-19 for real estate agents. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. And betraying and, open houses. Yeah. But can't I ride in the back seat of your car? Uh, COVID. Sorry. Oh, but COVID. <laughs> no, yeah. can't do it. I got kids. I got grandparents. Exactly. But I mean, the other thing is that people are going to, you're not going to have to do door knocking anymore because nobody, I, I, who, who's I talking to? Oh, I was talking to my buddy Jake, and uh, he was telling me that he had someone come and put just a door hanger on his you know, on his front door. And he's a normally pretty mellow dude. Yeah, he wasn't so mellow. Like he was pissed that like someone would infringe upon his space. So I mean, that's another thing that agents could potentially get themselves out of. Potentially eliminate open houses. Potentially eliminate door knocking. You know, so you'd be doing calls, texting, social media, video, YouTube, uh, email database. You know, you know, management, all kinds of you know more passive aggressive and passive man it is passive aggressive a uh, more passive marketing uh than what you're, you're being told to do right now so here's the question is that going to help or hinder the agent population and gene what would you say as a marketer from what you see with all the different marketers out there you know is, is it going to help or hinder people to not to air quotes, potentially not do open houses and potentially not do door knocking anymore due to COVID and everything else no, i think not being able to do that's going to kill 50 percent of the population because i think agents have no idea how to do the rest like the most 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 mm -hmm. people are struggle with the tech side of it and if you're forced to not do face-to-face -face interaction no more networking groups no more no more of that stuff i think a lot of people are going to be caught holding the bag uh, unless they dive in and figure out how the hell to create leads and send mass texts and figure out what the laws are behind you know spamming people and there, you know there's a lot to it it's not easy you don't just flip a switch and all of a sudden you're on facebook and you're and you got people hitting in your chat bot i mean it's well, yeah, that'll, that'll be tough and this and that last segment was brought to you by gvi media gvi media for all your media needs please reach out to gvi media and one of their associates will get back to you in a short timely manner thank you back to regular scheduled program or not okay. at all well this is, <laughs> is this a new format <laughs> what's going on here but i appreciate that <laughs> I just I just, just had the idea. I'm like, I'm just gonna mess with Gene. Yeah, of course, it, it, it is an interesting thing, Gene. You, you brought up uh, there's there's only a small segment I feel like of agents that were already thriving on things like door knocking and yeah. cold calling. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it does. Like Greg, it does affect you. You've been door knocking for 20 years. Your dad was door knocking for 40 years. If you were trying to make it right now from scratch and you didn't have any sort of database, you didn't have any sort of social media following, and all of a sudden something came along that eliminated your ability to go door knock, you would have been in real trouble. Fortunately, you were doing both. Um, but I don't think that's most agents. Most agents are not making their living off of door knocking e even now. I mean, I'm sure there's, there's some out there. Um, but I mean, most agents are... I, it's not going to affect them a ton. I think it will affect things like listings where people go like, Hey, I don't know that I want people traipsing through my house just any old time, right? It'll make showings a little bit harder. Um, I think another, another side effect will be buyers will spend more time on the front end previewing 
uh, properties before they go hit the streets. But I think the average person, and Jason, I'm curious about this from your perspective, but my bet is that the average person at the end of the day will still want to narrow it down to two or three possibilities and then go see how it feels in person. Because to me, buying a house is still 90% based on the feeling that you get when you stand in a place. Jason, what do you think? Oh, without a doubt, man. I think that a lot of people, well, I'm hoping that I'll, I'm hoping number one, I'm hoping agents encourage that, right? Rather than, I mean, I still see agents, they'll jump in their car. Somebody say, hey, want to look at a house? They'll jump in the car and try to show 30 houses this afternoon to one buyer. Um, so I'm hoping agents, uh, I think part of that responsibility is on agents to make sure they get their clients pre-qualified, make sure that they, you know, do the things we're supposed to do, narrow it down to at least an area, at least a price range, right? But I agree with you. I think that people are going to, um, instead of wanting to see 10 houses, 15 houses before they buy, you know, I feel like there's going to be a lot more driving by, a lot more driving by and saying, hey, this one ain't going to work or that one's not going to work. It, rather than, hey, let's, we don't have anything to do Tuesday. Let's go look at all of these, you know? Yeah. Yep. And um, I'm hoping that happens. You know, I'd like to see it happen. Um, yeah. You know, I'm all for working smarter for sure. I have, oh, 100%. An, idea. Yeah, I have an idea here that related to this because Matt, you brought up a good point. I've been pitching this for seven years now, and, but I think now might really be the time to do this. Okay. And and that's like, so here's your tech tip, Greg. I'm going to roll it all into one. Okay, cool. I think, I think now with this Matterport coming up and these 3D tours, people are starting to really expect that if you list their house in, you know, I guess over a certain price, but you put all the, put out all the marketing stuff. So I'm going to have a Matterport. I'm going to have a video walkthrough. I'm going to have great photos, right? As a list, as a, as a buyer's agent, I know that my client, Greg likes IPAs and, and I love where Jason was going with, let's narrow this down to your top three and then get in the car. So I would go to Greg's house with, with my favorite four pack of toppling Goliath King Sioux. And I would drop it on his doorstep with my cards and say, I've gathered up 14 virtual tours and matter ports that meet your criteria. Sit down with, with your girlfriend tonight, look through them and then give me a buzz tomorrow. And we'll set up the two or three that you like that you want to smell and feel. And I think from my perspective, if I was a buyer, and you just brought me beer and I can now narrow. like I, I'm thinking about we're, we're looking for vacation homes down the shore. Mm -hmm. I don't call every single vacation home. I look at, I narrow it down to the one that best fits my needs or maybe two of them. And then I call them and I say, Hey, is this available? So in this new, in this new age now, I feel like mostly everybody's going to have at least a virtual tour, if not a video and a Matterport. Is this an opportunity for you to change the way you do your showings and, and do them? Like I just talked about or, or are there other ideas you can come up with well what about not a was it ai i mean whenever you put the toaster box on your face right you yeah, know? virtual reality virtual reality i think this is where i've been talking about virtual reality coming into into play because now you can you can really look and get a good idea through this thing but like you said gene you you, you can drop the beer off on the front porch today hey man enjoy you know watching the videos tonight beer for you wine for the lady and then you guys sit down and each of you put a toaster box on your face and you walk around and you you know take a, you you see the properties so, and you can embed so things Greg, in. Greg, to that point, check this out real quick. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but you know you have the technology. If you're looking on video, you have the technology now to do those 3D tours, the photo yep. spheres they're called. Yep. If I hit a button on here, it actually sets it so that I can uh, – I'm trying to figure it out, but there you go, photosphere. Um, when, watch this. If, it, if I can get it to show you, it basically sets it up so that it shows you the, the thing through two eye holes so you can put this in your virtual reality headset. Oh yeah, yeah. It's already set up like that. Like you can you can do that today, right? Yeah. So the technology is going to get crazy real quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You can get uh, was it Google 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 Box? It, what is it? Uh, Google hardware Google Cardboard. That's what it is. You can get Google Cardboard. There are a couple of bucks a pop. You can put your own personal branding on the exterior of it, and you can show them exactly how to do what Gene just talked about. Is you'll get your camera set up in a certain mode, drop it in the Google Cardboard, and then they're they're looking at a you know, images of this property with your branded little headset that they can now keep because it's a couple of bucks. Kind of neat. Jason, are, are you seeing like just from from your clients when they're walking into listing appointments, are, are, are we hearing bubbling up from the consumers? Are we seeing a demand from consumers yet to do this? Or is this all uh, speculating um, on things that are cool you know, and the consumers don't know about yet? I'm, um, I'm a big believer that a lot of the stuff that we, uh, we talk about as agents, um, general public don't know about it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, they don't know it's an option. Um, I think some of the agents now, now I'm in a market, you know, typically we see things, you know, happen on the West coast and in bigger markets a little quicker than we see it here in, in South mm-hmm. Carolina. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we're not a big tech driven area. Um, our big tech savvy area. That's probably what I should say. Um, I feel like a lot of the stuff, even like drone footage and stuff like that. Like, I feel like, um, I feel like it's something that agents are selling people on rather than the people saying, Hey, Hey Matt, I'll hire you, but you got to use Matterport. I don't think the general public as a whole knows what Matterport is. Right. They might've seen the videos, but you know, that isn't something they're, they're saying, Hey, there's, there's probably that rare seller that's saying, Hey, I gotta have this. I gotta have an agent do this. Mm-hmm. But I think the majority of them, I don't think they're looking for it right now. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's James, awesome. can I ask you this? Like, do you think this is an opportunity for a guy like you to introduce that to a, to a seller? Mm, yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad thing. Right. Um, now I'll tell you something that I, I've talked to my agents about that are my coaching program is you got to look at the market you're in, the price point you're in and what is a financially sustainable listing process, right? Mm-hmm. Because I, I'm a big believer and you have one listing process that we, we're selling a service that sells houses, not we're not creating a specific plan for each individual house, right? Yeah, that's that's really what good. I train agents to do. So now I've seen agents that have come up with these systems and they're in markets like mine where an average commission checks about five, 6,000 bucks. And they'll come up with these systems, man, and between drone footage, a staging consultation, all this stuff, as soon as they get the listing paperwork signed, they're spending 11, 1200 bucks, right? And um, the problem with that is in an upmarket, things are great because you're going to sell enough houses that that $1,200 that you're putting out on every single listing doesn't really matter, right? But And if you're selling 75, 80, 85% of your listings, there again, it doesn't matter. When the market drops off and all of a sudden, instead of selling 85% of your listings, you're selling 45% of your listings. Um, Dude, that $1,200 of listings could be a lot of money. Right. Right. So I think that we need to be really mindful of the financial uh, sustainability of the listing system that we're creating. And I'll tell you guys this too, like back when I first started, the talking house was like a big deal, right? They were 250 bucks. You guys remember those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Logged in. I think it was 11, 20 AM or something like that. You parked your car about 10 feet away or it was going to be <laughs> too far away. And they could hear me talk about all the great features of this house. And it was really cool. I, I went to a real estate thing. They sold me on it. I bought five of them right away. I was a broke college kid that just started selling real estate. I charged them on my credit card and it was it was great to talk to sellers about, right? But the problem was I only had five of them. And so I went out there and I started, I, I was selling the talking house literally to my sellers. Well, I only had five and I couldn't really afford a six one unless I charged up my credit card a little bit more or sold a house, you know? So it created a process for me that kind of limited me to five listings until I, I sold something, but I also had bills and dues and all this other stuff I had to pay that come out of that. Uh, so um, with that example, nobody knew about the talking house. The general public wasn't asking for the talking house. It was it was me selling it to them, right? I did the same. Th- I did the same stupid thing with flyer boxes, right? I went to a real estate thing, talked to this agent, was selling a lot more houses than me at the time. I come back and I said, man, I got like 50 something listings. I need flyer boxes on all of them. Now, I never really sold a house that I could track back to the flyer box. But what I did was I put flyer boxes on 50 houses and I created a job for myself or my assistant that was one day a week. We had to drive around and fill up flyer boxes because I'd sold the sellers on these things. And if their house hadn't sold, they were literally calling me going, hey, Jason, hey, Jason, look, my flyer box is empty. Is that why we're not getting showings? (laughs) <laughs> right. So um, in the flyers, honestly, it was probably kids from the neighborhood making paper airplanes and stuff out of them. You know, who knows? I might have got a call here and there. So um, I encourage agents when you're looking at this new technology and you're looking at, you know, what are you going to spend your money on in your listing system? Um, you know, look at what commission you're making, closing ratios and stuff like that. And be smart about it, you know, um, because let's say you're listing one, two houses a week average sale time all of a sudden goes from, you know, 30, 40 days in your market to 180 days in your market. And I mean, Hmm. depending on where lending guidelines go, we may see that in the future, right? Hmm. Because a lot of banks have closed up a lot, you know, minimum credit scores 
have went up significantly at some banks. Um, mm -hmm. I think Chase is doing a 700 minimum credit, credit score now. So when we see days on the market go up, like all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, if you're spending a thousand dollars a listing between professional photography, Matterport, drone footage, only God knows what, um, all of a sudden, instead of you carrying ten thousand dollars on 10, 10 listings, you're going to have, man, if you're listing one a week, over you're going to have 20, 25 listings, maybe your inventory is going to go up and your time on the market is going to go up. So I just had a totally weird idea. I don't know why this popped yeah. up. But I mean, so all different industries are getting hit, right? And mm -hmm. one of the industries is getting hit is acting, actors and act actresses, you know, professionally mm -hmm. trained actors and actresses. Why not get a professionally trained, attractive human being, you know, out there to walk through the property and do a professional narration of it? Give that person a little bit of money, build a relationship with them and their sphere of influence. Get a get someone who likes to be on camera, is good on camera, used to be on camera make the home sound look in incredible and you can sell that to your sellers going hey look i'm gonna have a professional actor or actress here are a couple of headshots pick which one you want we're gonna walk through and, and you know, represent your property because then you're doing a couple of things you're helping another industry you're building a new relationship and you're potentially getting introduced to a new sphere of influence all by just by by taking some of your money and pushing it over to just a whole new idea what do you guys think about that I mean, maybe yeah. Wow, that one went over like a little blend. I mean, the, the only uh, celebrity we have um, we have in Myrtle Beach is we got that, one of those Tiger King guys. Um, we might get him out. <laughs> we got a, a guy from the Tiger King, and then we had a reality show called Myrtle Manor, which was about a trailer park. And uh, those people are available if they're not in jail. And uh, that's that's about all we got over here, Greg. <laughs> and we, don't have a, <laughs> we don't have a lot to choose from. Um, oh, no, I'm kidding. There's probably somebody out there, you know, but... um. Uh, but That's but funny. you know what, uh, you know what. Even though I, I'll tell you guys, I've done this recently. I had some video that I wanted narrated, and it was more for a coaching thing than it was a general general um, public client thing. But um, dude, you know what? I got an amazing voiceover from Fiverr for twenty bucks, mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know, even with that, God, if you can't really add Matterport, maybe you do a great looking video. You know, if you're on a budget, maybe do a great looking video, have it edited through Fiverr, have a great voiceover th done through Fiverr and um, maybe you got 50, 100 bucks in it. You know, um, I mean, just a thought, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it, well, all I'm saying is like think outside the box. I mean, if there's a local person that, that you know, is doing a lot, maybe a, a, a very famous restaurant tour in your area that can't do uh, what, what they're typically doing to stay in front of the public eye, maybe have him or her walk through the property. Again, it's just local mm -hmm. celebrities. It doesn't need to be Tom Cruise doing your your, your, your narration. Although if you could, if you yeah. could sing that, um, damn. <laughs> you got some good things. Right. Greg, Greg, Greg lives in another world out there in San Francisco of celebrity restaurateurs. Yeah, yeah I don't, that's, uh, yeah, I don't see a lot of that going don't. on in my hometown in uh, Council Bluffs, Iowa. Um, yeah, we don't see that either, Matt. Well, and, and what, <laughs> what, what I find amusing about this also is the you've, you've got Greg on the one hand that Greg's Greg's standard default setting is, ooh, what else can we do? <laughs> right? And then Jason, I feel like your default setting is, how can I not have to do that? But uh, yes, yes, that's actually that's very accurate, Matt. <laughs> how can we not? But do it's that? good. I mean, that's um, I, I love it because I'm I'm so I'm so obsessively focused with having a simple profitable business. I'm constantly yeah, asking myself that same question. Like I don't want to do everything. I don't like it's fun to think about stuff. I, I think it like the brainstorming process is insanely important to come up with all the range of what could you do. But at the end of the day, 80 of those I hundred ideas are going to be terrible. 15 of them are going to be good, and maybe five of them are great. And you should only do the five that are great and leave off the other 95. Um, to me, that's where you actually have not, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I wrote about this in, in the intro to the book. It's super, super, super easy to end up with a messy, complicated, unprofitable business, and that's what most people do. Like it takes a, it takes work, and it takes someone like you, Jason, like from like from from a bird's eye point of view, helping people get a different perspective on the business and go, do you really have to do that? Do you really have to do the well, fireboxes? Do you really have to do the Matterport thing? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it just it just takes somebody constantly reminding you, do you really have to do that? Is that essential? Because most of the time, the answer I think is probably no. 
Well, you're probably like me. The more complicated I make the process, the least likely it is that I'm going to do that process. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? I mean, I mean, even some of the CRMs we see out here are so complicated. They they have so many options, and you're like, hey, well, I'm going to take these people and I'm going to tag them this way, and this one I'm going to do this way and that way. And next thing you know, you got like ten steps to putting in one person, you know, in your CRM, yeah. and then next thing you know, you start skipping those steps and then your CRM is kind of a mess. And then you got to figure out how to go through a thousand contacts and straighten it out, you know, mm -hmm. or you just quit working on your CRM. Most of us just quit working on the CRM, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or if, if, if anybody ever got inputted into it to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. That's right. It's uh, it's uh, that is a massive problem with software and that's like the most visible example, right? Cause we can, we can see it. You, you open up a piece of software and you're like, I only want to do X. Why do I have a thousand different <laughs> options? Uh, but our businesses, if we could imagine them, if if they were visual, if we could look at our businesses visually, they look the exact same way. It's mm -hmm. all just right. a bunch of stuff that's thrown up against the wall. And yeah, that's the thing is that if you actually want to do more, for example, if you want to sell more homes, that process has to be checklisted and streamlined as much as possible. If you, if you actually expect to sell 25 or 50 homes a year, you got to think about, Am I going to do this 50 times this year? And well, if so, I'm going to make it as easy as and frictionless as possible. Well, let's say um, let's say you're really, really going to focus on listings, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And all your buyers are going to get referred out. Now, I did this back in 2000, 2013, 2014. I had a real big team. I had a property management company between sales and leases and stuff. My whole team was doing about 400, 450 transactions a year. Mm -hmm. And so... But I was doing everything, man. If it was out there, I would try to do it. Like I mentioned the flyer boxes, I mentioned all this stuff and I hated it. I was working seven days a week as close to 24 hours a day as I could. I'm pretty sure I had a stomach ulcer and there was always more to do. There's always more to do. I had an assistant one time. Um, I remember my team, I actually had two assistants at one time. The second assistant, I don't even know what she did. You know, um, <laughs> they were just there. I don't even know what they did. Um, and when I started winding that down and I started winding down the property management company and stuff. Um, and actually guys, I don't know if I talk, told you guys this last time, I hadn't really talked about it on a whole lot of stuff, but there was a period of time there that I said, you know what? Screw real estate. I hate this. Right. And this was back mm -hmm. around 2013. I hate this. So for about four or five months, I said, I'm going to just find something else to do. I'll do the deal. I'll write out the listings. I got to do the deals that fall in my lap. And when, you know, this ends, I'm going to do something else. Right. And then I kind of realized how much money we make versus a lot of other industries. Um, we make a lot of money per transaction. And when we look at the steps of what we absolutely have to do, we look at the bare minimum, right? Um, we look at the bare minimum, what we have to do to take a listing and actually sell that listing, get it from listing paperwork signed to sold. And, you know, our MLS and stuff does a tremendous amount of stuff automatically just by inputting it in. I started looking at that. I said, man, we make a lot of money to not really do a lot of stuff. And the rest of the stuff over here is kind of bullshit, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's just cool. Some of that stuff we're doing for us, you know what I mean? We're not doing, uh, we're not doing it because I was doing radio ads. I was doing everything you could possibly do. And like I said, I think some of it was for, for me, <laughs> for my right. ego, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and then when I took in, uh, I, wind down my whole team and quit. Dude, my business got so simple and it got so easy. And then for years there, I was, I'd was i sell you know, 70, 80 houses a year, just me. Plus I do referrals because I wasn't working with any buyers. And most days I was off by three or four o'clock in the afternoon. My day would start about eight. I didn't work Saturdays or Sundays. I set standards for my business. And um, man, you know, and I just do the, um, I got really good at doing the bare minimum. I know it sounds bad, but I done what had to be done for each listing to get it sold rather than it's really cool to do things, you know, like Greg talked about, like, man, hire an actor and do the walkthrough and man, that's amazing stuff. Um, but all of a sudden you're doing the actor, you're doing an open house for each one. You're doing all this stuff. Like, like there's some guys out there that have the 101 point marketing plans, you know, mm -hmm. um, this is something else I kind of realized too, guys, when I went from like, like doing everything to doing nothing <laughs> um, or very, you know, the bare minimum. I realized that like listings became easier because I wasn't showing them that hundred point marketing plan. I was showing them like 19, 19 steps to get your home sold. Right. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it became like easier 
it became easier to explain what I was doing. Mm-hmm. It became easier for them to understand what I was doing. Sometimes we forget that the general public, like we get hung up on all this stuff and I'm, I'm super guilty of it too. I'll look at stuff and go, God, that's cool. I need that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I need two of those actually <laughs> one for home and one for the office. <laughs> it is super easy for us to get really hung up on that. Yeah. But the general public, um, they just want their house sold. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, I really think I've got listings over other agents because my whole process, it was a real plan that was really simple. There wasn't a lot of moving pieces to it um, mm-hmm. where some of the other agents would come and they'd have so much information to just overwhelm them. I mean, what do you guys think about that? You got a 150 point marketing plan. Um, I mean, quite honestly, if you remember the general public, are you even looking at the 150 points? No, no. I don't think it was. A, I don't think yeah. anybody, anybody ever looked at it. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it served its its point, which was to explain and overcome the objection that agents don't do anything to get the home sold. They just throw it on the MLS. So if you're going in there and you have a 19 point plan and they actually understand the 19 points, that's every bit as good, if not better than handing them 150 points that they never ever read. I mean, they both serve the same purpose, but ideally if the person understands better what you do and that, and it goes back to the idea that you mentioned being a problem solver, right? It's not just about like, I'm here to get your home up on the MLS and then sit back and drink a Jack and Coke while other people show your home. Like I'm yep. here to, to perfectly match the strategy behind the marketing of the home and the pricing to attract the right person to get them to the negotiating table where I can do my real job and get the deal done, right? If that's yep. the way that they see you and that's the way that you present yourself, that is valuable. And you can and you can take the, the foot off the gas pedal of trying to show all the marketing stuff that you're doing if your focus is on is on the process and they see the value in what you're doing. So that, that's, yep. yeah, that's my personal point. I think they both work, um, uh-huh. but yeah. I'll tell you guys something too. When I, when I started doing that, well, you know what, when I was pre 2013. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was really into a lot of stuff we see, you know, like, man, I had a book, dude, I had a book, right. Mm -hmm. I had a book that I would send people about getting their house sold. Damn Mm -hmm. thing was like a hundred pages, right? (laughs) Nobody ever read the book. I didn't even read the book. I had somebody else write it. Um, and, um, I'm not sure anybody read it. So after 2000, 2013, I hired a different coach. He told me I need to pre it pre um, listing package. I'd used a version of it before, Mm -hmm. but this kind of helped me really, really narrow it down to about eight or nine pages, 10 pages. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, when I narrowed that down to nine, 10 pages, 12, and I think it ended up finally about 12 pages because I had some questions. I had some common questions in the back of it and stuff like that. And um, one of the things that happened was all of a sudden people started looking at it. And um, something I, I told my uh, my coaching clients during those this time where you couldn't really leave home and it was shelter in place all over the country. I said, guys, if you can't go look at houses, still make your calls and focus on getting your your pre-listing package into as many hands of sellers as possible, mm. because right now they got time to look at it. That's true. And in that 10 to 12 pages, I noticed that, um, man, I'd go on so, so many appointments where people would have it printed out. People would have it printed out. They actually looked at it. All of a sudden, my presentation, my actual, my actual listing presentation wasn't about a marketing thing because they already knew what I was going to do because they actually right. looked at my pre-listing package. My presentation was me going through our pa- my paperwork, which yeah. I think is almost equally as important. I think a lot of agents out there aren't getting listings because they can't explain the paperwork properly, you know, hmm. that people feel comfortable with. I mean, that's kind of a, I thought, but I've seen, I've just seen it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, no, so, um, you know, guys, I mean, if I think that a lot of agents, if we look at the multi-level marketing industry, that's a great example. Mm-hmm. Right now, a lot of the training in the multi-level marketing industry is get people to your presentation, right? I mean, we've all seen that. We get pitched these the real estate people get pitched these MLM things, God, once a week, you know, I get mm-hmm. tricked into them, watching them. And um, the idea is getting as many people on the call as possible, right? And getting it, as many eyeballs to see it. Mm-hmm. What if we done that in the real estate industry and we started taking a pre-listing package, a 10, 12 page PDF, or maybe a five minute video, right? Not 50 minutes, just three to five minutes that goes over your pre-listing package. What if we done that and we focused on getting that in as many hands as possible? Hmm. That's a damn good idea. And then, and then following up with those people that you sent it to, mm-hmm. right? And 
I mean, it's it's pretty easy to have somebody on the phone and they say, hey, I don't want to list, hey, I don't want to list my house today. And you go, hey, no problem. I tell you what, let me send you over a package about me and my team and what we do to sell houses. When you get ready, you'll have all my contact information. You know something about us. What's your email address? I guarantee when you do that, and I've learned this from making calls myself, I, eight, nine out of 10, I'll give you their email address with very little hesitation. And then you've got another way to contact them. They got a piece of information. You got something to follow up with them about tomorrow and basically go, Hey, Greg, Hey, this is Jason Morris. I sent you over an email yesterday. I just want to make sure you got it and see if you looked at it and you had any questions. And, um, and so that, that's, uh, that's been kind of interesting too for me. I'll tell you what, I've got people that will call me every now and then that I sent my pre-listing package to. I get an appointment on Tuesday. I sent my pre-listing package to this woman probably two years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. Sent it to her probably two years ago. Forgot about her, right? She calls me up and she goes, Hey Jason, we talked about two years ago about selling my house. We were thinking about putting it on the market. I got all this stuff from you. Um, are you still working for, for EXP? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we still, uh, actually our marketing plan has, uh, has advanced a little bit. And honestly, it's the same. It's the same as it was two years ago. I haven't added anything different, really. Um, nothing different that she would know anyway. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, yeah, great program. We sell a lot of houses every year and um, EXP has actually expanded even further since then. So when's a good time for us to meet? And I'm going to meet her Tuesday. I'm just taking the paperwork over there. And that was from a, a pre-listing package I sent out like two years ago. Goodness. Right. And somehow, I guess this woman printed out. She's held on to it. But I get calls regularly, stuff like that. You know, that it's, they well, got my stuff. That's such a simple thing. I mean, it, there's a lot of different programs out there. My brother has a company called uh, Likely.ai. It's a predictive analytics, right? He's going to predict the most mm -hmm. highly, most likely people to sell in different areas. Um, yep. He's just kicking ass with this program. But I mean, if you take that and then you just send it out with a customized landing page with a video embedded into it. Uh, well, hey, you know, I, I don't know if you're thinking about selling, yada, yada. But hey, click the link below, fill your information in. And I'll, my team and I will text or email over the, the link to my listing package to know what you need to do to get your home sold in today's market. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you know, it'd be something very easy to do and completely duplicatable. I mean, you could go into multiple different market yep. spaces, full, full metros. And then you could also like, let's, I don't really work San Francisco that, or the peninsula. Right. So let's say, you know, Burlingame, uh, like I got a listing you know, appointment. Well, I don't fucking know Burlingame, but I can find someone. <laughs> who knows Berlin yeah. game and someone, if they say that they're associated with me, you should let them see what I do and then just pass it off to them for a 40 plus percent referral fee. I mean, it's very simple to build a scalable business on this thing. Um, and I love the idea with the pre-listing package being uh, yeah. sent out. That is so simple, but so powerful. Well, you know what, Greg, too, man, if you did, if you done it on a landing page, like you just talked about, you done like a little three to five minute video and maybe, a, maybe you start sending a link. Maybe this is something that maybe this is something I should do with us talking here is start sending it out, sending a link to download the PDF, but having the video there, right? So they mm -hmm. got to go to the landing page, but then you got it pixeled. Yep, so all of a sudden they're showing, all of a sudden you got, you're followed up with them, whether you're calling or not, because they're seeing you in Facebook, you know, mm -hmm. and they've got your pre-listing package. They've got the, um, they've got like a three to five minute video of you going through it with them, if you want to do that. But the only reason you're doing it, is really so you can pixel them and you can do Facebook ads to them also. I mean, that, that's probably a great plan. Spend five bucks a day and, you know. Oh, yeah. And then and then drop hammer on them. And for from $75, $75, from 75 cents to $2 a door for 30 days, you can drop a geofencer on that property and, you know, get a thousand mm -hmm. homes. You'll drop 135,000 impressions on their smart devices in those in those properties. You will become omnipresent. I mean, they will not be able yeah. to get away from you. And if I it's listening presentation, listening presentation, you know, this is what the points are. Here's this, here's that. I mean, they're gonna be like, oh, fuck, dude, this Jason guy's all over the place. He's he's on point. I've seen this guy everywhere. God, um, he's yeah. My dreams. yeah, you could easily uh I mean you could easily do that so you're following back up. There's so many things you could do, you know. I mean, that's probably the problem. There's so many things you can do. That, um, that is part of the problem. Absolutely. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh yeah, it is a uh it's sim simplicity takes like relentless focus and constantly questioning yourself to make sure that you don't end up with a 19 point checklist when it needs to be three. Yeah. I mean, it's just, <laughs> yeah. It, it I mean, that's right too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, Jason, what's the best way for people to reach out, connect with you, get into oh, the Facebook gosh. group, all that fun uh, stuff. You know what? Go to real estate agents that really work, do a search for it on, um, on Facebook and you'll see me in there. Um, Jason Morris group is my uh, group coaching website, but, um, 
the easiest ways, real estate agents that really work on Facebook. Cool. Awesome. And you said it's over 30,000. So you got a great group of people in there. Yeah, lots of people to talk to. Lots Love of it. stuff, you know? I know. I think yeah, you were under, I think you may have been like at 5,000 or something like that when we talked to you last. That's been insane, insane growth. Facebook groups have just yeah. been going gangbusters yeah, the last been, uh, couple of years. It's been, it's been good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Gene, same question for you. What's the best way to get in touch with the, uh, the digital architect himself? As always, you when you see in the bottom left corner of my screen, genevolby.com, it's got a little widget. Click that widget, put your digits in there. <laughs> hold, hit your boy up. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gracefully skip over that and go to Greg. <laughs> Greg, what's the best way to get uh, for people to get their digits to to, to you into your widget? <laughs> Get your digits in his widgets. I couldn't. I couldn't resist. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, Gene, that's coming out for you. That's why I was la laughing so hard after you said it. I'm like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, oh, jeez. Okay, guys, go ahead and go to, you know, go ahead and obviously subscribe here to, you know, Real Estate Uncensored. Follow us on all the different platforms. Send me a DM on Facebook. i uh, be happy to get back with you. Got any questions or thoughts or anything like that. Um, also, my number, guys, is extremely simple. I got an agent from my, uh, a call from an agent the other day, actually yesterday. She's like, oh my God, you did pick up your phone. I'm like, yeah. Yes, I know. Um, but uh, go ahead and give me a call, guys, or shoot me a text. 925-915-1978. Um, and I am launching some really cool stuff. And I'm looking for a couple of you know, heavy, 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 heavy prospectors. If you guys are a heavy prospector, I want to do a personal introduction after I have a conversation with you uh, to a guy who's building a program that I am personally blown away with by the, the how much business has brought into my life in the last seven days and uh it can go super big super heavy it's like nothing i've ever seen before so go ahead and do that there matt where can people uh reach you uh just go to microfamousbook.com get a free uh free copy of the book free plus shipping i'll cover the uh, shipping if you cover the book get that into your hands it's all about how to become famously influential to the right people so if you want to build a business uh, any type of online coaching, training, uh, consulting business, and you want to work with ideal clients that you actually enjoy and don't make you want to pull your hair out, uh, that is the uh, the book that shows you the roadmap to do it. Talk about hair being pulled out. I mean, Jason and I are crushing with the, with the weaves. <laughs> oh, Holy man, cow. mine is wild. Mine wow. Is wild. I tell you, I tamed it down for you guys. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Just tamed down. Yeah. All right. Tamed down. Down. We need to open up the style of salons very, very quickly. All right, uh, Greg, I, I'm loving, uh, I'm loving Jean's hat today. So I want, I want to just tie up a nice red, white, and blue bow. Multicolored. The first multicolored bow we're tying around the show in show history. So red, white, and blue. Let's tie that wow. right up around the episode and call it good. And it's a holiday weekend, so very well timed, Johnson face. All right, you guys. Hey, Jason, thanks for coming on. It was great hey, catching. I really appreciate great it. Great dropping knowledge bombs. Love the the practical ideas about just recording your listing presentation in five minutes. The top bullet points, send it out to the buyers. Guys, go watch that again if you didn't hear that. Gene, you creep me out when you're quiet. I don't like that. Stop that immediately. It's I don't know what's wrong with you. But we're still glad you're here. The evil bald ninja, the master of all tech. And then Johnson, the biggest Johnson of them all. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you guys thank you for being here we love you to pieces we love messing around but if you like it share it if you guys go and give us a uh, five star not a two star or five star review on all podcast platforms so we get more visible until next time peace out ninjas <laughs> we are done